it turns out that depending on who you ask, it's either the most brilliant way to debut first footage, or if you aren't really sure who Ross is, it's a little confusing. Either way, who can complain about new Deadpool 2 footage? The Heat Vision team of Graham McMillan, Ryan Parker and Aaron Couch take a closer look. But more importantly, Deadpool co-creator Fabian Nicieza even dropped a line to share his two cents as well. Ryan Parker, this is a classic Ryan Reynolds trailer, in that it is completely outside the box and unique. Rather than just flash a few short glimpses in a tiny preview, which any other movie would have done in this case, Ryan and crew give us something completely out of left field. It sets the tone perfectly. Graham McMillan, this is where I admit that, not being American, the lure of Bob Ross is entirely lost on me. The majority of this teaser just left me thinking, oh, I guess Bob Ross did a bunch of innuendos. Or maybe he was super straight list, so that's why there's the innuendos. I don't get this. It felt like a Saturday Night Live bit, for the most part, which, I guess is what people want. My favorite joke. As random as it is, is the appearance of Teddy Ruxpin, Jordy Lafferge and Golden Girls Blanche Devereaux in the end credits. This trailer really goes hard on that 1980s retro, doesn't it? Fabian Nicieza, I thought it was brilliantly offbeat, and exactly the kind of quirky pop culture choice that works perfectly for Deadpool, since 70% of the audience probably won't even know who Bob Ross is. Aaron Couch, speaking of this film's brilliant marketing, it took it to a whole new level of meta today when Fox and the official Deadpool website began referring to the film not as Deadpool 2, but rather as untitled Deadpool sequel. It's sort of like how we had to wait months for the untitled Han Solo movie to be titled Solo, a Star Wars story. Then again, maybe I'm wrong, and it really is going to change its title from Deadpool 2. Parker, I found it interesting we did not see hardly any cable. And I wonder if that's because they are still working on him in post-production. It could also be they would rather it be a bigger reveal in the next trailer, but still, I wanted to see some brawlin' in action. McMillan, the lack of cable, and his appearance, with hand only, in the post-credit sequence, because apparently we have post-credit sequences in trailers now, suggests that they know how much the audience is waiting for him, and are holding him back for the first full trailer. I'm assuming that's why there's no domino here either, sadly. But you can't blame them for keeping everyone on the hook for a while longer. Couch, we didn't see Colossus either, but they've got months of post-production with actor stuff and Kapisic ahead, so that could be the case. I'm guessing with Cable it's more about building the anticipation. Fabian, do you think we should have seen more Cable? Nasiza, no. I think they should take their time revealing my pal, Nate. It should be a trailer review that puts everyone's enthusiasm for the movie over the top. Parker, Ryan outdid himself. This trailer only showed a few seconds from the film, but fans will be talking about it all day because it was presented in such a fun way. I am left feeling excited for the film, but also totally fulfilled. If another trailer doesn't drop for a few months, which it likely won't, I feel like we were given enough to hold us over. You can't say that for any other trailer which would have shown so little of the product.